I've warned you for a while that changes were coming. Now you'll see why. Come on. Just like before, huh? Well friends, these are the changes. Meet my new lathe. Did you think on the Technomachina's website it was an HBM 250 Vario Complay? Oh well, the link in the description and all that, you already know that, right? Let's take a look at what I've got, if that's okay with you. Let's review the lathe's included accessories to show how complete it is. And, and it comes with a number of accessories that other brands don't include, and buying them separately? Well, there are a lot of things to show. I hope I don't forget anything, so let's get started. What does this lathe come with? It comes with two steady rests, one movable on the bed and another on the bed. We just started the video and I'll begin by pointing out a flaw, something I disliked and find poorly designed. As you can see, these screws here, they should have put them on the other side. Why? Because I hope not and I hope I don't get careless one day when you're pushing the cart, okay? You hook the screws and apply a lot of force, right? This side is flat. In my opinion, it should be designed differently, but let's just be careful. So we're going to use this on special occasions and when we need it and for now we can take it off. The lathe comes mounted with a three jaw self-centering chuck and besides that it comes with the reversible jaws. Okay, to make it wider, now I'll give you the measurements, I don't remember how much it was. And well, that would be the essentials. What any lathe you could buy would come with, but this particular lathe and the vast majority of lathes from the Technomachina website. It also comes with us. With a four jaw independent chuck and the four jaw chuck that I don't want to take out. So I don't get my hands dirty while I'm recording. They are four jaw independent. Plus it's something we'll use a lot and that offers many possibilities. It brings us the flat plate, ready to work as a dog or dog mouth, whatever you want to call it, and with dimensions that are quite remarkable. Uh, 24 centimeters. Here is a chip card, and to remove it we have to slide it. It's here, and to remove it, okay, to put it back, do the reverse. And it sets up a blade holder for us. Uh, fixed, I think it's called fixed. But since I've been working with the other lathe, I've realized that, well, for me, it was easier to use the quick change. That's why he believed it. This one no longer includes the lathe. I wrote them down for you. This quick change. With the tool holders with parting blades, well, we'll see that later because that doesn't come with the lathe. How much can we turn between centers? Well, supposedly the technical sheet says we can turn 55 centimeters. I think that, for example, if we put on the flat chuck, we can add another 6 centimeters and get 60 centimeters. That's already a real lot. I'll also tell you that I think this time I went overboard. I've used a small lathe before, and this time I didn't want to be limited. So, well, I went for something that I know I won't be able to get the most out of for now. Lastly, the lathe's included accessories. Well, here we have... The chuck key. They bring us a key for the pulleys in the back. Eh? Well, they bring us a lot of things. The jaws I mentioned are interchangeable, so you can flip them to hold a larger diameter piece. In the games of... This lathe has gears for threading. Let me explain threading, as it's very useful. It has just a three-position Norton gearbox, yet still offers an impressive range. Which means that with a dial, we have three different thread pitches, and every time we change the gears, we have three different thread pitches. We'll see that now. It brings us some Morse taper. A uh, Morse taper 4, which is for placing it on the flat plate. And it brings us a Morse taper, Morse taper 2, which is the one used by the tailstock. But anyway, well, I'm going to take this out of here to put it on. Besides that, it includes the usual Allen wrenches and fixed wrenches in different sizes. And an oil gun which you might think is for lubricating the parts while we're turning, and you can use it for that. But the oil can is actually for this. 
as you can see uh, in different parts of the lathe like the chuck in many places there are these little brass pieces with a bearing use the oil can on these grease fittings with the small ball okay right on the little ball and we apply oil here right okay and this is used to lubricate all the parts well and things that are less important okay without taking away their importance we have this protection to prevent us from putting our hands in the claw dish, although there are many people who take them off. Well, on this panel we have emergency buttons, power on, power off, left and right. Okay, which way does the plate rotate? We have an revolutions per minute display, the potentiometer for the frequency inverter that this lathe comes with, two speed ranges, it has two pulleys of 50 revolutions, which are actually 30, or like that, 39 to 1000. And from 1000 to 2000. Although it's always advisable to use it here from 50 to 1000 revolutions. This is ready for a finer finish. Here are the gear tables, though I still don't know what this one does. Honestly, I don't know. If anyone else does, please tell me because I still haven't found out. And then here we have the gear table for Rosca in millimeters and below for the Imperial threads. Always make gear changes from the bottom up. The H is a pin, checking if the H is a pin. A little wheel without a gear and the numbers are the size of the gears. So, what does it mean? That if we put this set of gears, for example, we'll have threads in position C of 0 0.3, in position A of 0 0.6, and in position B of 1.2. With each gear change, we have three different thread steps, which is super useful. We no longer need to keep changing gears like I did on the other lathe. Whenever we need a different thread pitch, we have to change the gears, which is also true for the Imperial system. Here is the three position wheel, a, B, and C. As I said, this is a small three position Norton gearbox with oil bath. Oil is poured in here at the oil level. This is the spindle rotation switch, the lever used for threading, turning, and similar tasks. Here we have a cover that allows us to insert rods and pass them through to the back without having to cut them. I think I remember that on the other latte it was two centimeters, and on this latte it gives us a lot more flexibility because. 25 millimeters. Here, if we open the mechanism's cover, we have the motor transmission, pulley, and gears. They're simple and easy to replace. To activate the spindle bar, loosen this screw and move the lever forward or backward. Well, to activate it, we connect it with this gear here, okay? And to separate it, we move it backward. Connected, well, it's logical that it makes a bit more noise. I'm going to leave it connected. Now, when you hear it, you'll notice a bit more noise, but that's because it's connected. Moving it backward significantly reduces the noise. Although I have to tell you that the lathe is wonderful because it hardly makes any noise at all, so you can work without ear protection perfectly fine, okay? Well, we wrap things up here. Let's put the cone on now, the Morse cone. And here we have the counterpoint, which is this counterpoint. Yeah, what characterizes it is that it has a lever here that is for quick shifting. A big plus, but if we want more security, we can keep tightening it on this tower. Caro. And we move on to what for me is one of the most important parts of the lathe, the carriage. Let's review all the features this lathe offers, which are truly impressive. Well, here we have the cross slide. A cross slide like any other, okay? It moves smoothly, works well, and has degree markings for proper rotation. What's wrong with this lathe? Look, if you, if you see these guides, we can move the carriage from here to here. We can move it. That's another point in its favor. Huge. Here is the transverse carriage. As you can see, the incline is extreme, so you must keep them well adjusted. This one also moves super smoothly. The length And now let's get to the important part. The automatic feed. What do we have on this lathe? Do we have automatic feed? For threading, which supposedly uses this, the automatic feed is the movement. And this little lever, do you know what this is? Here we have, if we do this, there we would have the position for planing. But if we do this, we have automatic cross feed. A real... And here's a very, very, very important part of feed dial thread. That means if we're making a thread, okay, 
For example, I'm not really into this topic, but I think I get the idea. For example, we've started a thread in position number six or nine, which is a six or a nine, then we can make the thread, okay? We can release the automatic feed whenever we want and keep working. If we want to resume the thread later, that's fine. We go back to position 11 and that way we would enter the same thread pitch without making mistakes, without deviations and without errors. And this here is a thread dial chart, which I still don't quite understand, but I can kind of figure it out. For a 0.4 thread, we can enter at any position from 1 to 12. For 0.5, also from 1 to 12, for example, even from 0 to 6. I see these numbers here, which makes me think that we could only enter at 3 and 9. I'm not sure how this works yet, but I'll find out later. What really impresses me is the lathe's weight. If not, just ask my friends who helped lift it onto the table. Uh, and I can't really say for sure, because the technical sheet says one weight and the package said another. But anyway, it weighs around 150-180 kilos. We struggle to lift it onto the table. And now, if you agree, we're going to get it running. With the new mic on the camera, it'll pick up all the sounds. But it's true that the lathe hardly makes any noise, which is amazing. And I want to tell you that I have the gears in place, so let's try it. I'm missing. There. There, it would be at 30 revolutions per minute, and in the first pulley position, we could go up to a thousand. It also adds several safety measures. We have the emergency stop button, we have a stop here, we have a stop here, we have a stop if we lift the cover, well, a few of them. I, I'm going to shift the gear to the left. We can use the gear if the lathe is stopped, which is how it should be changed, really. Let's turn it slightly using the chuck, okay? Can we change it now? Would the same thing happen? If we're working at low speed, we can change it carefully and slowly. Don't slam the gearbox, go slow. We plug it in and for example, I'm going to bring it over here a bit. And we move it to the left. See how I did it slowly? The Lucilla bar would be activated, but these protections prevent us from seeing it. It's so that the shavings don't stick to the threaded rod. And for example, we'll put in the threading gear. And there it is. As you can see, it's in position C, though I'm not sure which spot, but it's moving slowly. It must be a very fine thread pitch, so it's changing slowly. We switch to B here, which goes faster due to a different thread pitch. We see... And, and in A, it would be a different thread pitch. Don't tighten this lever too much, because keep in mind that the bar is drawing in and we need to find the coupling of the nuts with the bar. Lower it slowly, if not, let the first one in, then raise and lower again until we see a width. And if we increase the speed, well, we'll see, it goes faster. And then, we slowly change the direction of the blade, well, it goes in the opposite direction. And now this is really important, keep it in mind, it's extremely important. If we have this one engaged, don't engage this one, okay? Because we could break anything. We always need to keep this one facing up when using it. Well, as we've said, this is the threading one. Let's start it up again slowly, so we understand each other. Okay, and here we have... Like we said, well, the previous one, but what happens? This one was for screwing in, but if we pull and lift... Here we have one that would be for turning. And 
and if we do the opposite position slowly always always slowly until it engages we'd already have the transverse movement What if we reverse rotation with the lever? Well, in the opposite position. Well, and here we would have the direction of rotation of the chuck plate. Here we would have it to one side. And to the other side. Well, as many of you know, we said we were going to make a locomotive on the channel. And this has been the reason why it has taken us so long. Because I wanted to change lathes, since I was already feeling very limited with the other one. So now I want to get a bit of practice with this one. The concepts are the same, but it's true that it changes a lot. And I'll give you the same example. If you drive, you have your own car and you handle it very well. But as soon as you take someone else's car, you can still drive the same way. You already notice it feels strange, right? The same thing happens here. I want to get used to it, then we'll start with the locomotive. I'm walking around the workshop. Everything's messy, but this one will go right in front. The thing is, I have to get the workbench. And when it arrives, I'll put it in the other place, and that's it. I hope you like this new acquisition I've made and that you enjoy it with me on the channel. Honestly, without the channel, I likely never would have bought this. If you're new, Browse the channel to see our previous lathe videos or watch any video you like. And I invite you to subscribe and become part of this community and see how we work with it from now on. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Remember, a little surprise awaits you tomorrow. See you in the next video, friends.